Okay. Hello. It is time for Mitsubishi Rally Art Restart. We've got word on a tough Aussie de developed and built Triton based Rally Art Super Ute incoming. Will it take down Ranger Raptor, Navara Warrior, and the soon to arrive Toyota Hilux Rogue update? Stick with us for as much as we know on who's doing the work, when, where, why, and how. Um, welcome. I'm Cars Guide Deputy Editor James Cleary, and joining me on the Cars Guide podcast panel to discuss this reignition of Mitsubishi's legendary World Rally off road racing and performance division, our adventure editor Marcus Kraft. Crafty? Greetings. As well as key contributor and rally art deep throat, Andrew Chesterton. Chester. <laughs> Hello, world. Excuse me. <laughs> we'll also cover off this week in news and take a look at the fresh metal we've been driving in cars in the garage. And we're on standby to respond to your feedback in the YouTube live stream. So let's get into it. You know, uh, Chester, we know Mitsubishi's revived rally art in motorsport with a, a competition modified Triton entered in the Asia Cross Country Rally through Thailand and Cambodia. That's scheduled, I think to happen in November, but you're onto something related mm -hmm. to that, but from uh, likely from a skunk works much closer to home. Can you fill us in on where all that's heading? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I guess the curious thing here is that you're right. Rally art is undergoing this long awaited resurgence at the moment, um, both in the Fev products and, and Utes internationally. However, we understand they're going to do something similar in Australia, although it won't have rally art badging in fact we understand it's going to be called the triton extreme it's going to be produced in uh, partnership with walkinshaw who of course have some form in uh, this second manufacturer development of tougher utes for australia and it could be on the road gentlemen as early as 2023 which does make it an interesting time for utes in this country because we know that there's a new ford ranger, ranger raptor of course which has always been the sort of halo off-road product Toyota has finally taken the bait and announced that they're going to be doing an apex off-road variant of the Hilux, although it, it, that is as yet unnamed. You've got things like the Nissan Navara Warrior. You've got things like the, the Walkinshaw W Series, which is their partnership with uh, Volkswagen and the Amarok. And now you'll have a Mitsubishi Triton Extreme, which is pretty exciting. Yes, and look, the important news is that there's no E. It just starts with an X, right? So it's <laughs> of course it's completely rad. Three, uh, three X's. Tree. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's mandatory. It wouldn't be so old school. <laughs> its radness is 100% intact. So it, it does it does make my journalism senses just trigger slightly <laughs> when I see <laughs> terrible spelling of some of these names. But you, get, you get the sub editors pen out, mate. Yeah, Red that's pen, right. Uh, so yeah. crafty. It feels like we're in the midst of. It, it's like being teleported back to the late 60s, early 70s in the US, where it's a muscle car, you know, golden period, but no one knew it at the time. It feels like we're heading we're heading <laughs> yeah. into that for Utes, you know. Um, that there, there's all this competition in the market, and it's it's going kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's it's been a Ute heavy market, as 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 Chester and everyone knows for for years. And I mean, these these things are very popular. I mean, it's another one of these sort of niche within a niche. These sort of high performance Utes, you know, some of them have a you know a little bit more off road focus. Some of them, you know, they don't really care. It's 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 kind of dress ups with a little bit of but. But having said that, you now have the more substantial ones like the Warrior and that sort of thing, uh, the Raptor. Um, so it's not just a sticker pack. And I love the fact that that companies like Walk and Shaw or Prem Car and all those sort of people oh. are doing are doing Aussie testing. You know, they are purpose building stuff for us and for yep. our roads. I mean, we got some 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 pretty atrocious road conditions and, and scenarios. And so I, you know, I think it's great, and I think they're going to sell gangbusters. Well, I was sitting next to an Amarok, a Walkinshaw Amarok 580 in, in traffic and thought, that is a tough ute, you know. It's a, yeah. it's a really good-looking thing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but there's now an off-road-focused one and a more on-road-focused version. That's so exactly right. It's, yeah, that's it's right, covering yeah. a lot of bases, and who knows, you know, Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi may go down that road as well. Yeah, Oh, absolutely, and you're and you're working off. Sorry, Chester, just really quickly, no, and you're and you're working off a great platform. I mean, uh, Mitsubishi's while they're not the most exciting thing around in the in their basic form, you know, Pajeros, Tritons, Pajero Sports, you know, they're rock solid performers and the, and they're good all rounders. Mm. 
Well, let, let me tell you what, what we think we know about the uh, the extreme. So the, it, it does look like they're definitely going to take an off-road focus with it and, and it's now become pretty common with these um, development houses in Melbourne or Victoria. It's going to have, you, you can expect it to have anyway, new off-road suspension. You can expect it to have extra underbody protection. You can expect it to have a general toughing, toughening up of the exterior. You can expect it to have all-terrain rubber. Yeah, so yeah, it, 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 it's certainly more than a sticker pack. And I would say as well, the, the, the Warrior program especially, what that's done for, for Premcar in term of, terms of its staffing numbers and everything else, what, what uh, Amarok and, and their other products has done for Walkinshaw is really awesome. It is kind of like a return to small-scale Aussie auto manufacturing. We're not pumping out Commodores and Falcons anymore, sure, but there are a lot of people employed making cars better for Australians in Australia, which I think is awesome. It's, well, that's it's, it. there's, right. there's such residual knowledge and talent, um, mm. given that Australia had been producing cars locally for so long, that uh, there, there's just all of this expertise that is obviously now applying itself in a slightly different way. Yeah, you'd think about all the hundreds of years that, that you know, would otherwise be, be lost, you know, to, re to retirement, which is, un you know, unfortunately the, the case. And I'd yep. love to see more of this happen and more of these people, you know, get gainful employment with different mobs, different things on offer. It's a real exciting time, I reckon. Well, tell me, here, look, I've gone through the spec of the Triton that's being used in this uh, rally up in Southeast Asia. Cusco mm -hmm. adjustable front and rear dampers. Does that brand name mean anything to you, Crafty? No, mate, not off the top of my head. Okay, but, uh, how about uh, how about the, how about the big supermarket out near Parramatta? <laughs> oh, that's Costco. Oh, that's Costco. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dampers buy in bulk. <laughs> then the, the front and rear ventilated discs. They have got four piston calipers. Endless, endless brakes. Anyone heard of that? Oh, uh, no, the brand. No, no. no. The, the alloy no. wheels are work. W O R K. Uh, okay, but. The tires are Yokohama, Yokohama Geolander. Oh, well, there you go. No, we we've heard of those. those. Yeah. And the, the hood is carbon fibre. The front and rear door panels are carbon fibre. I just wonder whether there might be a little bit of crossover and, and some, you know, chatter to and fro with what's going on up there and what's being done locally. You'd think they'd almost have to be. But then the other side of that coin, I guess, is Walkinshaw knows their way around you know, engineering local product, they have their own preferred suppliers and all that kind of stuff. So how it shakes out, but I would, I would actually think it might go more down the Toyota path, whereas the changes they make in Australia through their Melbourne Development Centre uh -huh. are then often adopted internationally. I, I like yeah. to think you might lead the charge there, you know. Yes, yeah. I mean, I think we're, it's, it's, we're recognised as a strong ute market with particular Absolutely. market conditions that mean vehicles have to have a certain level of durability and, and uh, longevity um, as well as performance Absolutely. and refinement. So yeah, you're, you're, you're entirely right. That could well happen. And can I, can I just throw one, th one, one other thing out there on Mitsubishi? This isn't so much this car, but the next Triton, which isn't too far away either. Yep. Just further to your point, JC, we, we know that the, the global boss of Mitsubishi came to Australia and rather than go to the Opera House and climb the Harbour Bridge, he toured caravan parks and work sites to get a better idea of what Australians were towing, how they were using their utes, where they were going, yep. so that he could go back and then feed all that information to the engineers. So you're right, we are now being recognised absolutely as the kind of the ute experts, I suppose. I believe he did that incognito as well. Thongs, stubbies, I yeah. think he had uh, a singlet <laughs> and occasionally right. a hoodie on so that he could absolutely <laughs> melt into the uh, into the landscape, as it were. The, the only concession to corporate life that I saw him when I was sitting down for a beer with him was one of those T-shirts with the bow tie painted on it. That's one of those. That's he, right. He, he that's rocked I, that pretty well. So yeah. Yeah, that was the formal <laughs> formal dinner in the in the special let's, dining room at the caravan park. Let's that's just say his business sarong gaped open at inopportune times during during campsite <laughs> chats so well i suppose it's interesting crafty you mentioned that mitsubishi has had sort of a white goods reputation that toyota had some time ago and what it took for toyota to get out of that rut was someone with like you know akio, to akio toyota has been like a dog with a bone like we are going to make more interesting more exciting cars and lo and behold sports cars and performance models come in to, to jazz up their personality and, and their brand, it takes someone at Mitsubishi to do a similar thing and say, yeah, we've become a bit kind of ho-hum and we want to get back to where we yep. were. And whether that means Evos of, of some description and Rally Art comes alive again, I mean, 
um, only a little while ago, uh, last year, the Vision Rally Art happened. I th it was shown, where was it? Um, it must have been in Japan. And it's 22-inch rims, six-pot brakes, muscular kind of body kit, the whole thing. So it mm -hmm. seems as though there's a strong intent on behalf of Mitsubishi within maybe the constraints of the whole alliance with um, Renault and Nissan, et cetera, to, to do this. They must have the green light to reinvigorate their brand. Yeah, what, what, whatever. Sorry, Chesto. Right, um, whatever the end game is, JC, it's an exciting time. And I mean, that's that. I was talking to a mechanic mate the other day, and he said Mitsubishi's. They, you know, they've never been that exciting. But you know, he's he's never seen a lot of issues with them. You know, in the workshop. Yeah. So, yeah. He's, that's, and he's seen a lot a, of toad a and thrash to within an inch of their life. But yeah. But I know, mean, when you've got a a brand with that kind of reputation for all of the the basics like the the strength and the durability and the quality if you can then give that some zing and yeah, that's magical you know and, yeah. and put a bit of a performance edge on it that's a pretty magical combination yeah absolutely so people have absolutely. got confidence in what you're ready to offer so what are we talking as far as you know chesto time frame you said it could be it could be next year uh I would suspect you'll see rolling prototypes on the road before the end of this year, and I and I, Cars Guide understands they're targeting a, a early twenty twenty three launch. So the other unspoken part of this is that they don't have uh, a lot of time up their sleeve, really, because the Triton isn't too far away from being replaced. Replaced. We've seen yeah. you know camouflage uh, variant versions of the new variant already testing internationally. So. It's, it's kind of now or never, so I, I yep. don't expect it will take too long to see one. And viewers uh, watching the podcast, we've we've had a crack at a render of from what we know to to see if we can approximate what's coming. And on the basis of that, it looks pretty tough and macho and all of the things you'd want it to. So uh, and, and, and it's likely to be reasonably close, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. And reasonably priced too, I might point out as well. I think it'll be, you know, you're still talking an older vehicle. I don't think there'll be any under the bonnet changes. So I, I can't see it being stratospherically expensive. I, you know, it, it will be certainly more expensive than the current top spec Triton, but you won't be pushing to Ranger Raptor territory, I wouldn't have thought. Good. Okay. Well, that's good. Interesting. Thank you, Chesto. Uh, and, you know, and thank you to your contact, uh, Rally Art Deep Throat. So that's, <laughs> that's been very helpful as well. And I... Uh, I had to smoke a lot of Marlboros to get this to so I, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say before we move on, I'm, I'm quite in, I'm proud of my rendering as well. I did that with charcoal. Yes. Um, and look, no, and, uh, <laughs> nobody can make uh, Microsoft Paint uh, dance, and, dance and sing <laughs> like right. you, Craft. That's you, right. You, you're all That's over. right. That's um, what I'm renowned for, mate. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> yeah, basically an art director in disguise. So That's it. Well, let's, let's move on now. That's, that's pretty interesting news. And we're going to move on to this week in news, our news desk. And Chesto, let's keep going with your good self. It's a ute of a different kind. Noises have been kicking yeah. around. What, what's the latest? So let's talk more exciting youths. I didn't even mention this at the top of the show. So um, we, we know that Kia and Hyundai are working on their own ute, their own ute products uh, the, the, uh, group. Um, and initially, initially we were told it would be a diesel powered dual cab that will take on, you know, the heavy hitters of the segment. Then, then that news started to get a little cold. And then the global boss confirmed that they would do, certainly do a, an electric version of, of that ute. But what he said, which is critical, is that he'll also do a derivative version for emerging markets. And yeah. in the ute space, we are an emerging market. We, we love our diesel utes. Yeah. And so what, what we've taken that to under, taken to understand from that is that the derivative, in fact, will be a diesel powered dual cab. It's back on the table. Uh, and in more exciting news, it's it's being, it, you know, we expect it to be benchmarked against the absolute best in the in the business, i.e. the new Ford Ranger, the current top selling unit in Australia, the Toyota Hilux. They're, they're, when they come, they'll mean business, which and is no, exciting. And as you mentioned, it's a story that has been uh, bubbling along for a little while with with ups and downs. But I think it reflects the appetite uh, for this vehicle that's out there, that every time we've got a little update, all of a sudden, yep, lots of interest. We know that the, the story starts to Absolutely. light up. So, um, you know, if you were Kia, you'd be, you'd be pretty keen to get that product in market. All right. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of love the product already and, and a, a dual cab with a seven-year warranty that's been has local uh, ride and handling done 
in Australia is yeah pretty pretty big news. Very good. All right, and your it's your story, and it's on the site. So for all the details, people should uh, should click on you that. Can check now, it out. now, crafty. Uh, when it comes to vehicle names, there are good ones, and there are bad <laughs> ones, and then there are just straight up left field ones. Uh, tell us about what 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 we've had a news story on this week. Mate, um, our very own Tim Nicholson uh, penned a yarn earlier this week about um, a Chinese ute, a big Chinese ute coming, big in terms of physical dimensions. Uh, it's aptly titled the King Kong, King Kong Cannon X, I think. There might even be an X yeah. stolen from Chester. He's going to want a hell of a tray to get a lot on there. <laughs> That's true. It's more like a novel, long, on the, novel on the back of the car. Just so long as the letters don't fall off. Um, and and so it's, it's pretty big, and I got... I guess the idea uh, that, that Tim has reported is, is that it'll be closer in size to things like the Ram 1500 and the, uh, and the yeah. upcoming uh, F truck, the uh, F-150. Um, so it'll, it'll, be, it'll have a larger tray and it'll be larger in terms of wheelbase and, and size than the existing Canon X. Uh, those things, are, uh, just really quickly, in, in general, I mean, Chinese utes uh, especially i mean you can't just write them off the knee-jerk reaction from people is to you know you know whatever it's going to be you know i'm going to think it's atrocious or whatever but you can't write these things off they're getting better every generation and i mean they're, they're at a stage you know where where perhaps the korean companies were you know 10 15 years ago in, in in terms of sort of catching up to people and improving on their product and that sort of thing i think i think it'll be interesting and you know, like chesto said geez it's it's you know it's it's a ute world at the moment and has been for years so i think you can't really go wrong when you're throwing products at at a, at a ute hungry uh, market so look if it, if it ends up being called that when it does come here you're either going to have bragging rights or you know you're going to be kicked out of the place like what are you driving <laughs> mate oh, i've got the king kong cannon you've what um it's an interesting choice and when you <laughs> Yeah. When you've got nothing to carry, you've got the uh, you've got the Havel big dog. That's your family. <laughs> That's right. But when you're at work, it's the King Kong cannon, the big dog, and the King Kong cannon. So yeah. you know, whether it's Silverado F one fifty, everyone knows about those. Yeah, those some... big sort of US style, you know, trucks as some people call them. Yes. Okay. Good. That's good. So can I just point out here, this is something I, I, we give the Chinese brands a lot of stick for their bad names, but there are some shockers out there. I mean, Ram's got a T Rex, Ford's got a Raptor. They're, everyone's got their own little quirky. Yeah. Names. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And a little bit after a little bit of time, it you get used to it and it becomes yeah, uh, exactly. it, it's normalised. So yeah, it just comes as a shock initially. Exactly. Now, that's a beautiful segue, Crafty. Thank you. That story is in the on the site, so people, uh, if they want all the details, should go to that. Uh, Chinese. MG is obviously making a big impact in the passenger car market, uh, new vehicle market, and a couple of noteworthy additions to the range are on the way. Um, the MG4, now it's an EV, um, it's joining the local lineup in what looks like early 2023, and it's potentially mm -hmm. undercutting others in the market right now and could be the cheapest electric car on sale in Australia even undercutting the just-launched BYD at 03, which is 44.381. So it looks like, based on some UK pricing mm -hmm. and, and relativities, that it could undercut that, but it's got things like a 10.2-inch multimedia screen, lots of power, 450-kilometre uh, range when you've got the, uh, the bigger 64-kilowatt-hour mm -hmm. battery, all these things for what could well be under 45K. Um, which is still a, a reasonable yep. a reasonable snip, but in electric car terms, that's that's pretty affordable. And then MG7 is a fastback. It's like a fastback sedan, and it's a combustion car, two-litre turbo four-cylinder. And just on the images that we've seen, it's about 4.9 metres long, so it's quite a big car, and it looks amazing. It looks uh, superbly sleek. And you get this entire wraparound screen thing, 33-inch display, which combines everything. It's taking the, the wow. kind of Mercedes M bucks and BMW's new treatment in their electric cars and dialing it up a few notches. So, yeah, um, that's going to be interesting and, and all the details on those cars. So MG4 and MG7, um, we've got stories on that in the, in the news section on the site. So if people want the detail there, that's can where I they just, Yeah. Can I throw one comment, yeah. one comment without notice. What, yeah. what I find curious about the Chinese EVs is they are getting cheaper. They're definitely lowering the purchase price of an EV in Australia, which is a good thing. 
But while they're doing that, all the existing EVs seem to be getting more expensive. The, the EV6 has undergone a price rise. Tesla seems to be putting their prices up every five minutes. Yes. So well, I mean, it, the, the gap between the, the existing cars and the cheaper Chinese cars is only getting bigger and bigger. Well, I suppose there's a whole new set of base materials that are required to produce electric cars. And the volatility mm -hmm. in those markets may be unlike anything we've seen before. You know, um, cars are yeah, still made out of steel, but batteries are made out of all kinds of rare earth metals and, and other things that may be difficult to acquire and the price is more volatile. Who knows? But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, that's think, right. I think you're right. Um, okay, that's good. So that's the taste of what we've got uh, going on in the news desk at the moment. But let's get to some reality and cars that we've been driving. The first one, Chesto, it, yes, it, it you've experienced it, <laughs> but um, you've got yes. one, one arm behind your back at the moment in terms of, of what we can uh, actually cough up with. Yeah, so look, first and foremost, I think your intro there of back to reality, it doesn't really describe. <laughs> oh, yeah, fair call. Cool. Yeah. This is uh, so. Look, I, I was behind the wheel of the Aston Martin DBX 707, and full disclosure, there is a, a drive embargo, so I can't tell you much about what it's like to steer. But it is just such a, a headline stealing machine that I felt that I needed to talk about it just a little bit. So they bill it as the world's most powerful SUV, uh, which in in and, in and of itself is a pretty good uh, uh, selling point. It's got a four liter twin turbocharged V8 engine. It makes 520 kilowatts and 900 newton meters which is a lot so that'd be an amg sourced That's exactly what it yeah. is okay, exactly very good. yep and then the, then the exciting part about it is this it, it is a big unit like it's a really big suv with lots of space in the first and second row and yet somehow they've managed to get this thing to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.3 seconds <laughs> and, and on, onto a top speed of 311 kilometers an hour so you'll never be late right. for the school run again that's exactly right <laughs> this thing has got everything you need so stay with me i'll tell you more about what it's like to actually drive uh it's, it's also about half a million dollars or about four hundred and thirty thousand dollars right uh, but i'll tell you more about what it's like to drive in time but i just wanted to get those headline numbers out there because it, they're just so incredible well the the one thing i was saying uh before we started the show tester was um the most powerful suv in the world claim is interesting because the recently outdated uh jeep grand cherokee Trackhawk uh is was 527 kilowatts um this Aston, the 707 part comes from 707 metric horsepower, which is 520 kilowatts. So it's an arm wrestle right. over, over seven kilowatts, I suspect. And I suppose technically that, that Jeep's now history. It's not available to buy, but um, that, I, that I think it might, was ridiculous. It might, have the Jeep, it might have the Jeep covered on torque, maybe. Mm. Uh, which is where they claim it, but you know what the car companies are like. My gosh, it, they you know it, it, they'll they'll find a way to claim just about anything. But it, whether it's the most powerful, the second most powerful, the third most powerful, it is very very powerful. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is That's just. Right. I mean, it does beg the question: Does anybody anywhere require an SUV with that much power? <laughs> well, if you've forgotten the freezer bags when you're getting the groceries, <laughs> yeah, I suppose the ice cream true. won't melt by the time you get it home. So there's that That's advantage right. for a start. It'll it'll get home before you do. Chester, how much did you have to put down as a deposit? Mate? <laughs> right. Oh, mate, I don't do deposits. I just said cash up front. <laughs> Take the lot. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Chesto. Good Amazing. Uh, crafty, you've been closer to the real, real world. Um, in a vehicle that there's a lot of interest in, quite obviously, and so your first taste of it. What, what uh, fill us in? I made it, uh, yeah, and a ton of hype about this thing, but but Chester's is taking the wind out of my sails because I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna talk up the newton meters, but I feel decidedly flaccid now. Um, it's the it's you the three set, liter you did set flaccid. <laughs> it's the it's the new uh, it's the new V6 Ranger. We had a, a wild track. Uh, we did a tow test, we did off-roading, yep. we did general driving. Um, unreal. Nice and comfortable. I'll keep it really quick. Uh, the, en the engine's pretty impressive. Uh, people have to read the yarn and watch the videos for more. Matt Campbell did an awesome uh, all-round review of it, and we've also done a towing comparison uh, with it against the Pro 4X Warrior. Uh, no, sorry, the D-Max. I was using the D-Max. Yep. Um, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Uh, there, there are some good points and there are some not so good points that <laughs> that I touch on in the or more than touch on. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of hype about this thing, JC. Just like you said, um, 
nice and comfortable, well appointed, plenty of features, plenty of driver assist tech. You know, you can't go wrong. And and for Ranger fans, I mean, if you're already one, this this is not going to put you off it. It's going to further sort of cement your your idea. Tell, tell me, Crafty, the things that maybe weren't didn't impress you so much were they hangovers from the prior model, or there was something that's emerged with this new one? Uh, a little bit of both. It's always the the Ranger has always been pretty capable off road, but something that you you have to drive with a lot of consideration, and yep. uh, you know you can't monster it through terrain and all that sort of thing, purely because of its its size and 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 its wheelbase. The wheelbase is longer now. The length is 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 uh, uh, it's not so long as the previous generation. Uh, the wheel track is a little bit wider, which all helps uh, you know give give it that nice sort of planted, settled feel. Yep. Uh, on the blacktop and also, you know, fast fast gravel or dirt tracks. But it sort of ham it it, it sort of hampers you a little bit when you're in, in the slower sort of low Ooh. range for right. driving. So good to a lot know. of fun. Good to know. All right, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um now what can I do? I can chip in with you know, this really as an SUV, performance SUV, it now sounds pathetic. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT. Um, it's only okay. 300, 350 odd k. Um, it also has a four liter twin turbo petrol V eight. Um, four hundred and seventy one kilowatts, eight hundred and fifty newton meters. And guess what, Chesto zero to one hundred kmh in three point three seconds. Um, eight oh, speed, there you go. eight speed Tiptronic, and of course it's all wheel drive. And look on the plus side ferocious acceleration just so much thrust um it has the adaptive air suspension so even though it rides on 22s like big <laughs> immense rims uh it's very comfortable it has the dynamic chassis control torque vectoring ceramic brakes are standard that's sometimes a 20k option on porsches it's fitted standard to this thing oh. titanium tailpipes um and safety up the wazoo <laughs> it's it's very very well equipped let's put it that way on the minus side, it was painted in a really lovely color called Arctic Gray. It's like a gray crayon, uh, crayon color, non-metallic. Five grand, five grand just for that color. Oh my God. Three year warranty. Three year warranty. <laughs> um, what's what's all that about? Yeah. Um, they claim twelve point six liters per hundred. I averaged about fourteen and a half, and I was really gentle with it. So as soon as you start to exploit that performance, I reckon you'd been in the eighteens and and mm. more. It'd be and it's, yeah. it's it's a four seater. So it you get rear sports seats. So it only seats four. If you if you want to put three in the back occasionally, you can't because there are only two seat belts. So there's that. Um, but I reckon yeah. overall it's a high riding SUV made to perform and handle like a supercar. It's just an amazing machine. Some might see that as just a needless contradiction. Go and buy a supercar. But if if you want that practicality and want to have an SUV, but it can go like the clappers. Um, there it is. If you've got a lazy three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, it's all yours. Wow! Well, yeah. Who does it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's in Chesto's massive wallet, isn't it? In hey, speak, his speaking his speaking with Chesto, I, I haven't been paid for the last podcast yet. So when that <laughs> when that comes through, I'm, I'm no, on board. You'll be right for the uh, Aston and a Porker. So has, 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 has the has the mail not arrived at that Bangkok jail yet, mate? Or what, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just those yeah. vertical suntan. We all know about that. <laughs> all right. Well, look. Um, with that, we've reached the finish line. So it's it's thanks to all our listeners and viewers, and thank you, Crafty. No, thank you, mate. And thank you, Chester. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, listeners. <laughs> and we, and well done to our production multitasker, Mr. Brett Sullivan. Uh, he's clearly on board with the whole car thing because today he's wearing a t-shirt saying. 10 things I want in life. One, cars. Two, more cars. Three, car friends who like cars. Four, a big garage for all my cars. Five, money for my cars. Six, cars. Seven, a woman who loves cars. Eight, a big trailer for my cars. Nine, a track for my cars. Ten, cars. So I think we're getting the idea. Um, Jump into the conversation. Cars Guides on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn. Or traditionalists can email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Listeners, please take a moment to rate and review the show. Five is the preferred number of stars. Thank oh, you. Oh, yes, please. Uh, yes. And viewers, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Cars Guide channel so you can stay on top of all our latest content. But look, before we go, um, the stalk's been busy across the Cars Guide team recently. Not that long ago, Maddie Campbell and, and Richard Berry and their partners both welcomed 
little girls and and Tung has another one on the way. And it had me thinking about that one time with our eldest daughter when she was newborn and we were heading off to a, a family picnic. My wife was so negative on the way there. I mean, I'd remembered the car seat, packed the stroller and the nappy bag, yet all she could talk about was how I forgot the baby. <laughs> 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 nice one, <Nancy. laughs> Oh, shocker. <laughs> shocker, mate. Shocker. 